Should you become an industrial engineer in 2022? The purpose of this video is to help you figure that out. We have a lot of facts and figures, including salary information, demand, and more later in this video. Industrial engineers are experts in creating productive and efficient systems. An industrial engineer could be working for a company like Tesla on a new factory creating electric vehicles. They could also be working for a company like Amazon, improving their whole logistical operation. Or they could even be working in a new Coca-Cola manufacturing facility, making the whole system more productive and efficient. An efficient system integrates workers, machines, materials, information, and energy to make a product or service. And these systems can become more and more complex. This includes improving quality control, inventory control, logistics, performing cost analysis, material flow, and production coordination. Just like every other engineering field, industrial engineering is male dominated, but not as male dominated as many of the other engineering fields. Last week, we did a video on electrical engineers. And we found that over 90% of electrical engineers are male. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, about 74% of industrial engineers are men, making this one of the least male dominated engineering fields. 5% identify as Hispanic or Latino, 76% Caucasian, 5% African American, and 19% Asian. Also, according to the Pay Scale Meaning Survey, industrial engineers report okay job satisfaction about kind of average or moderate meaning in their particular roles. According to the survey, 64% of industrial engineers reported extreme satisfaction or fair satisfaction with their job. And unfortunately, only about 48% report that their work makes the world a better place. So there's definitely some other engineering fields where people within those fields tend to report higher job satisfaction and higher meaning. But for the most part, it's really a lot of the healthcare occupations that report high job satisfaction and high meaning. Choosing an occupation where you'll have high job satisfaction and high meaning, those are two components of choosing a career. There's so many different variables that you wanna look at before choosing the right career for you. That's why we created Choose the Right Career. There's around 1,000 different occupations to choose from. And the goal of this program is to find that one ideal occupation for you, factoring in your interests, your potential compensation, barriers to entry, geography, personality, values, and purpose. If you need help choosing a particular career, check out the link below for more details. One of the big advantages of choosing engineering over other disciplines is the fact that with engineering, you really usually can just stop at the bachelor's degree level. This really depends on the engineering field. For example, a lot of electrical engineers tend to get master's degrees, but with industrial engineering, luckily, a large portion of industrial engineers kind of stop at the bachelor's degree level. According to the Occupational Information Network, about 59% of employed industrial engineers just have a bachelor's degree, 16% somehow get in with just some college, and only 11% have a master's degree. So this is a lot like many of the other engineering fields where you stop at the bachelor's degree level, but you might end up getting a professional engineering license. This also depends on which engineering field you end up going into. For example, with civil engineering to really progress because um, so many civil engineers work either directly for the government or indirectly for the government. A lot of them end up getting that professional engineering license. Not so with industrial engineers. Sure, they can get that professional engineering license depending on which industry they're in. But looking at some job postings for some of the supervisory or management positions, I did notice that a lot of those positions didn't require that professional engineering license. This doesn't mean that you don't have to get it. It just really depends on the industry or work environment that you're in. Next, we get into the wages of industrial engineers. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average base salary for an industrial engineer was $95,520 in 2021. This is just base salary. It doesn't include overtime and other benefits. This unfortunately makes industrial engineering the 13th highest paying engineering field. Industrial engineers tend to have a higher base salary than agricultural and civil engineers, but they're definitely beat out by, say, aerospace, computer hardware, and petroleum engineers. Industrial engineers have seen okay wage growth over the years, but there's definitely some other engineering fields that have seen much greater wage growth than industrial engineers. In the year 2016, the average base salary was recorded at $88,530. This rose to $95,200 in 2021. So between 2020 and 2021, wages rose by around $1,600 or a 1.7% increase in the average base salary. Now this is the average national base salary. When you drill down and look at the, at the state level or the metro area level, things get more interesting. And there's actually industrial engineers that make a lot more than this in very specific parts of the country. For example, in Anchorage, Alaska, the average base salary is $143,000 per year. 
You add in 30% for benefits, that brings total compensation to around 186,000 per year. But unfortunately, there's only around 100 employed industrial engineers in Anchorage. Another hotspot for industrial engineers, this is not a cheap place to live, San Jose, California, where the average base salary is around 123,000 per year. Factoring in 30% benefits, total compensation would probably be around 160,000. And there's around 3,700 employed industrial engineers in San Jose, California. So those are two metro areas in the United States that tend to pay industrial engineers a lot more than the average national base salary. But also keep in mind, there's plenty of places that pay well below the average national base salary. So you really wanna be specific in where you wanna live and choose a metro area that's pretty good for this occupation. Next up, we're gonna talk about demand. What kind of demand is there right now for industrial engineers? Industrial engineering is one of the big three engineering fields. There's around 300,000 employed industrial engineers in the United States. Civil engineering and mechanical engineering also have around 300,000 employed. So there's gonna be plenty of employed industrial engineers in every nook and cranny across the country. It's definitely not as big as software development, but it's still a pretty big workforce. And according to the government, the number of employed industrial engineers has been rising since 2016. In 2016, there were around 256,000 employed industrial engineers. By 2021, the government recorded around 294,000 employed. So between 2016 and 2021, there's been a gain of almost 38,000 jobs for industrial engineers in the United States. So definitely not so bad job growth for industrial engineers, especially given the fact that if you've watched any of my uh, other engineering videos, you'll notice that there's actually certain engineering fields that have lost people since 2016, one of them being nuclear engineering. Another way to gauge the demand for industrial engineers in 2022 is to look at job postings and compare the number of job postings against the number of employed. When on glassdoor.com, I searched for industrial engineer in the United States, came up with around 19,000 job postings. On Indeed, around 35,000 job postings. And on LinkedIn, around 50,000 job postings when searching for industrial engineer. So when you compare the number of employed against the number of job postings, it actually does look pretty good for industrial engineers. Not all the engineering fields are like this. There's actually quite a few engineering fields that don't have this level of demand. Industrial engineering, is kind of, it seems more like a safe engineering field to go into. You'll most likely graduate and have a job, whereas there's actually certain engineering fields where you might graduate with a master's degree or even a PhD, and it might even be questionable whether you can work in that particular industry. What often inevitably happens to those kinds of people is the software development industry scoops them up and adopts them. <laughs> because many engineers have such a versatile skill set, they do have the ability to pretty easily go into software development if they desire. Next, we can go into the personalities of industrial engineers, which Myers-Briggs types tend to be attracted to this particular field. And you're kind of going to see the same ones. If you watched any of my other engineering videos, you're starting to see the same types over and over again. So the most commonly found Myers-Briggs type, no surprise for industrial engineers, is the ESTJ, the ISTJ, and the ENTP. And if you've seen my other engineering videos, these are the top three types pretty much in every single engineering field, the most commonly found type. And it's basically the same story for the most likely MBTI types to become industrial engineers. The ENTJ, the INTJ, and the ENTP are the three most likely types to become an industrial engineer. So I hope you found value out of this particular video and helped you figure out whether industrial engineering is for you. If you enjoyed this content, there's plenty of other engineering fields that we have covered. If you're an industrial engineer, let us know whether you enjoy this particular occupation or you dislike this particular occupation and the reasons for either. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.